Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have some more terms and definitions and properties. For example, if in order to describe a macroscopic system, now macroscopic means at the large level. We're not looking at the individual molecules and atoms. We're, lock, we're talking about an accumulation, a number of moles of the gas, for example. So when we want to describe a macroscopic system, we need some state variables. They describe the state of that system. And so the state variables that we're dealing with are P, V, and T, which stands for the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of the substance within that box that we may have. Typically, we'll be talking about gases. So they describe what state it's in, and later on we'll see that we can go from one state to another state when these state variables change. We also want to talk about the property of these variables, of these state variables, and the properties of a system. If the properties are extensive or intensive, they mean something different. What is the difference between them? Well, when the property is extensive, it is proportional to its mass, like the volume or heat contained within an object. For example, when you double the amount of material that you have, you typically double the volume. If you have a larger object at the same temperature, it will contain more heat so that the amount of heat contained will be proportional to how much mass you have. The volume of the substance or an object will depend upon how much of the object or the substance that you have. So this is what we call an extensive property. An intensive property is that it's independent of that mass. For example, the temperature of an object. If you have an object that is at a particular temperature and you cut it in half, each of the halves will still be at the same temperature. The density of an object obviously also does not depend upon how much mass you have because it's always a ratio of the mass divided by the volume. So extensive properties, they tend to be expressed in capital letters. Now this is the key here, they tend to be, so sometimes it's confusing because it's not always the case. And intensive properties tend to be expressed in lowercase levels, uh, lowercase letters I should say. So here we have an example of a small v, which represents volume, but it represents the volume that is now independent, because it's an intensive property, is now independent of its mass. So what we do is we take the volume of an object, divided by the number of moles, and now we have the volume per mole, and so now this becomes an intensive property where the volume of the substance is actually the extensive property, and so we write it with a small v instead of a capital V. Here, same with the pressure, because what can happen is if you have a box and that volume cannot change, and now you add more material in that box, the pressure is going to increase, but you can express the pressure as a function of the number of moles or the amount of mass you have in it. So here you can make it an intensive property and there it's an extensive property. So that's when you see the difference in the letters, a capital letter versus a small letter. Now when it comes to the ideal gas equation, notice we typically write it as PV equals NRT and of course the number of moles R is the gas constant, pressure, volume and temperature. But notice that they're now all written in capital letters. Now, if we divide both sides of the equation by the number of moles, now we have P times small v equals RT. It's the exact same equation, except in this case, V becomes what we call the intensive property, where this V was the extensive property. So that's where the difference comes in. Notice that if we want to then turn something that has an extensive property and convert it to an intensive property, we simply divide it by the mass or by the number of moles. Either way, you get the same result. So again, it's important to understand these concepts, these terms, because otherwise, later on, we get quite confused when we see big Vs, small Vs, and we go, well, what happened here? Or when we see an extensive property or an intensive property, we want to understand what exactly the book is talking about. So this is why we do this.